Our next comes from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord make me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Please rise for our gospel acclamation. Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him everything they had done and taught. Many people were coming and going, so there was no time to eat. He said to the apostles, Come by yourselves to a secluded place and rest for a while. They departed in a boat by themselves for a deserted place. Many people saw them leaving and recognized them. So they ran ahead from all the cities and arrived before them. When Jesus arrived and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like a sheep without a shepherd. Then he began to teach them many things. When Jesus and his disciples had crossed the lake, they landed at Genesaret, anchored the boat and came ashore. People immediately recognized Jesus and ran around the whole region, bringing sick people on their mats to wherever they heard he was. Wherever he went, villages, cities, or farming communities, they would place the sick in the marketplaces and beg him to allow them to touch even the hem of his clothing. Everyone who touched him was healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I have a little bit of summer allergies going on this morning, so. You will recall that uh, prior to this particular passage, Jesus had sent his disciples out in pairs to teach, preach, and heal in his name. He gave them his authority You will also recall that they were told to take nothing with them. No money, no extra clothing, and no food. So we come to this part of the story, and they have come back to Jesus, and are eager to report back on everything they did. Picture it, all 12 trying to tell Jesus of their experiences all at once. I'm sure you can all relate to someone returning from a trip or a work term, and they want to tell you all about it right now. They didn't even take time to tell, to to eat. Jesus recognized that they were hungry and probably pretty tired. So he suggested a time of rest and relaxation. But like so often in our own lives, things don't go according to plan. Jesus and the disciples did manage to get away but the townspeople found out where they were going and followed them. Some even got there ahead of them. Our scripture tells us that when Jesus saw the huge crowd, he had compassion for them. The message translation of verse 34 reads, when Jesus arrived, he saw the huge crowd. At the sight of them, his heart broke like sheep with no shepherd they were. He went right to work teaching them. 
His heart broke for them. <clears throat> Jesus saw the people. He looked at them and saw them in all their humanity, in all their frailty, in all their need, and in all their pain. <clears throat> when those regular folks looked at Jesus, he reflected back the face of God. Did the disciples realize that when he sent them out two by two just before this incident, that when they preached and taught and healed, that they were the face of Jesus for everyone they encountered? We have no way of knowing whether the people that received the disciples realized that they were being gifted with the faith of, face of Jesus through each of those disciples or not. In whom do you see the face of Jesus? Earlier this year, I had a pretty bad illness and spent quite a bit of time in the emergency room over a couple of days. In the months since then, I've also had to undergo a number of tests to both rule in and rule out whatever it was that caused me to become ill by my scorecard. We're not quite finished yet, figuring out that, that yet, but I'll keep you posted. Anyway, <clears throat> I encountered nursing staff, technologists, doctors, porters, and administrative staff in my medical journey, as I'm sure many of you have. <clears throat> Looking back, and I can only speak to my own experience of these last six months. I can tell you that while I was feeling at my worst, each person with whom I came into contact was the face of Jesus for me. I was shown care and compassion. I was treated with respect. Hands were gentle and tender as I was poked and prodded. Instructions were simple and clear. Janice was allowed to accompany me throughout the process and could ask and answer questions for me when I couldn't. And it wasn't just me. I watched how other patients waiting for hours in eMERGE, hours, were treated as well. From everything I saw, the face of Jesus was reflected from each of those staff members to each person. As I'm sure we're all aware, those healthcare workers, along with so many others, are being forced to deliver this care with fewer resources and fewer staff. Jesus felt compassion for the people who flocked to him. He, here he was trying to give his best buddies a little R&R &R after their adventures when this crowd of needy people show up, all wanting some of Jesus' time. So basically, Jesus tells his guys to sit tight while he meets the needs of all those who thronged around him. This is almost exactly how the hospital staff functioned during the many hours I spent there. They grabbed a bite to eat where they could, took the opportunity to get off their feet for a minute or two, get a cold drink of water, stretch their tired neck and back muscles, and then turn their attentions back to all of us sick people who needed their skills. The face of Jesus, compassion. I could think of a lot of situations where I saw the face of Jesus in other people. I found it much more difficult to find examples of times when I had been the face of Jesus for someone else. I'm sure I have been, but I guess I don't think of myself as having that kind of impact. But I believe if we really assess ourselves and our lives honestly, we can come up with more times than we realize when we have been that face of Jesus for someone else. For myself, I did come up with an incident where I, or rather Janice and I, were the face of Jesus for someone else that I'll share with you. <clears throat> one evening, <clears throat> Janice and I went to see a movie. 
It was during the winter and it was snowing when we came out of the theater. It wasn't cold, but it was snowing with those big fluffy sticky flakes. The snow was starting to accumulate when we came out of the theater and we began to make our way to the car. A woman with a walker, much like the ones that Sherry and Carol use, approached us. She had some plastic bags attached to it and she was dressed rather shabbily. She stopped us and asked us for some money. Janice and I looked at each other and kind of shrugged and nodded, okay. So I took up my wallet and gave her 20 bucks. She took the money and thanked us with gratitude and we told her she was welcome and we turned and made our way to, to walk to our car. Then she said to us, you wouldn't be able to give me a ride to my daughter's house, would you? Janice and I looked at each other, both having the same thought that we had to get up for work the next morning. And, but we shrugged again and asked her where her daughter lived. When she told us, we realized that it wasn't terribly far by car, but it would be a pretty long walk with a walker, especially on such a snowy night. She could have perhaps waited for the city bus, but as I recall, it, it may have been a Sunday night and the buses run on a lighter schedule on Sundays, in which case she would have had a pretty long wait. So we agreed to give this woman a ride to her daughter's home. We collapsed the walker, put it into the car, and taking care not to lose any of her belongings as we did so. During the drive to her daughter's neighborhood, she told us much about her life. I don't remember many of the details, but I do recall that she had quite a number of health issues and she endured a lot of bad breaks during her life. We felt compassion for her. And in the end, I think both Janice and I were glad that we walked the talk and helped this lady out. The money and the ride home in a warm car were tangible things, but I hope she felt listened to and cared about in those few moments we shared with her on that snowy evening. Whether this woman was a believer or not, I hope we were the face of Jesus for her. For whom are you the face of Jesus? I know I don't get up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, I'm going to be the face of Jesus today. Look out world, here I come. <clears throat> no, nope, not even close. What I am more likely to do is look myself in the mirror and say that I'm going to show love, kindness, patience, gentleness, and hope today. In doing so, I hope the face of Jesus would show through my actions. Trust me, some days this goes much less smoothly than others. But I keep trying. Maybe you feel this way too. I also work in health care, and some patients we deal with receive good news, and some receive bad news. We deal with patients at their best and at their worst, and their saddest and their most disappointed. I can pray to do my best to treat them with as much compassion, dignity, and respect as possible, and hope that I reflect the face of Jesus in the midst of the good and the bad. For whom are we, St. Peter's, the face of Jesus? I think we do a number of things that might show the face of Jesus to our community. Our blossoming Jesus garden is an obvious example right now in all its bright green growth, bursting with fresh vegetables, waiting to be picked by anyone who needs something to eat. During the winter months, we place bags of hats, mitts, and scarves on our railings free for the taking for anyone who needs some warmth from the cold. Our ongoing support for the bridges and the food bank reach a wider community as we add our gifts to those brought by others to help people who need a bed for the night or some nutritious food for their family. The disciples were able to be the face of Jesus to those they encountered because they knew Jesus. They shared Jesus. They reflected Jesus. 
I also truly believe that lives were changed by those initials, initial interactions and that those folks in turn shared the good news of Jesus with friends who had never met Jesus or the disciples. We see the face of Jesus when we look for it and sometimes not until we look back on it. The face of Jesus, the people in Newfoundland in the immediate aftermath of 9-11, opening their lives and homes to the thousands of airline passengers stranded when the planes were grounded. Volunteers who pass out food and water in shelters following natural disasters like hurricanes and floods. Someone who helps an elderly or disabled person across the street or carrying a bag of groceries. People who rescue and foster animals. Friends, we are able to be the face of Jesus because we know Jesus. We are called to be loving, kind, caring, and compassionate. That's how Jesus behaved even when he was tired and needed rest. That's how he calls us to live so that others can see him through us. Folks outside our walls, in our community, on our own block, in our lives, need to see the face of Jesus in all of us. If not in you and me, then who? Times are hard for a lot of folks. The very least we can do is show them that someone cares. So this week, as you go about your days, look for ways to be the face of Jesus for someone else. But also take notice of the face of Jesus in those with whom you come into contact, because you will find it, I promise you. Amen. Please stand as you're able for our hymn of the day, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. It's in our Lutheran book, hymn 611, and the words are on the screen as well. Mm hmm. 